Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Connecting to God through His Prophet Alihi Salatu Wassalam. A Mudakara by Sheikh Muhammad Fawzi Al Karkari Hafizahullah from December 31st, 2020. God gives glad tidings to the one who understands His link to His Lord. This link to one's Lord corresponds to the expression Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Dear God, send or invoke your blessings upon our Master Muhammad When we say Allahumma salli, O God, invoke your blessings or send your blessings that act or that verb salli corresponds to the sila or the connective link between the servant and his Lord. God proclaims in the Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-Nabi. God and his angels invoke blessings upon the Prophet. O you who believe, invoke blessings upon him and greetings of peace. In response to this command, we say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad and we say Sayyidina or Master and mastership or masterhood, siyada of Muhammad is an acknowledgement of the fact that he is God's greatest creation. He is Muhammad on earth and Ahmed in heaven. He is God's beauty, the supreme intellect, the gathering of the names and the attributes. He is the door through which one arrives at knowledge of the essence. What then does it mean to invoke blessings upon him? What does it mean to say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad? It means, O Allah, make for me a connection, a sila, that is connected with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. This is not only an expression that is uttered on the tongue, it's also a flow and a living experiential embodiment of the Sunnah, the Prophet's behavioral model, in one's deeds, actions, and affirmations. Now, one of God's names is Al Badi'a, the originator or the innovator, the one who devises creation in a manner that's unprecedented. And when we connect to the Prophet ﷺ and through him to God who is Al-Badi'a, we also seek to innovate as it were or to devise a link that's unprecedented and original and rhetorically excellent and great in its originality with the Prophet ﷺ and through him with Allah Ta'ala. We seek to innovate and ibda in the positive sense of the word and to innovate in the beauty of the Prophet ﷺ. And we are encouraged to do so. We are encouraged to innovate in our love for the Prophet. The entire universe continues to expand by, the, by virtue of the name al wasia the all-embracing. And even at the worldly level, there continues to be marvelous, marvelous innovation in so many different ways. In the realm of transportation, you now have airplanes. And in response to this marvelous innovation, you have rulings or nawazil that are innovated by virtue of the innovation of airplanes. And as a consequence, you have new forms of prayer that are agreed upon by the scholars so that they may be performed in an airplane. This ibda or marvelous innovation, this original devising by the scholars is through knowledge of the name Al-Badi'a and the first 
thing that God devised is none other than the light of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. And Allah says that whoever sends one blessing upon the Prophet, God invokes ten blessings upon him, upon the person who sends blessings upon the Prophet. So we send our blessings upon the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and the Salatul Ibrahimiyya is the mother or the archetypal form of sending blessings upon him. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid. This is the first, the original Salat upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. But now let's say that in your heart you have a desire to invoke a blessing upon the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in a manner that's unprecedented, that's stylistically original, rhetorically excellent, and marvelous in its innovative value. You wish to invoke a Salat upon the Prophet that no one has done before. In the same manner as someone who loves their spouse will devise beautiful speech in order to express their unique love for their spouse, for their beloved, for their friend, for their brother, for their sister, for their parent. In the same way, when you meet your own father, you don't just say Assalamu Alaikum, but you come up with something rhetorically unique to express your gratitude and love for your father. To say nothing of addressing the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. God himself first originated the light of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. And we too have a right to originate, so to speak, or to rhetorically devise in an unprecedented manner in the light of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and nubdi'a fi nuri al-Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam through what God himself innovated. However, we find ourselves incapable of fully doing so. We can only devise or innovate something marvelous at one level and God in turn innovates 10 degrees for us, for that one degree that we did. What is this divine ibda or divine origination and innovation towards us? What is this tenfold blessing of divine innovation upon the servant who sent one invocation of blessings upon the Prophet? It's a protection from evil, from anxiety, from sorrow, and what is this evil, anxiety, and sorrow? It's us. And in what way does God protect us and heal us and suffice us from this sorrow, anxiety, and evil? It's by God devising or innovating a connective link in order for us to ascend 10 degrees so, they, so that He may heal and cure ourselves from our dark lower self and this connective link of light remains this connective link that heals us is the link that the prophet described when he told jabir the first that god created was the light of your prophet and this light is connected to us in a manner that's constant and continuous. This is Ibda'a, innovation, marvelous origination. And when we exert effort in sending invocations of blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ, in order for us to arrive at a single particle of this innovation of divine light, God gifts us a moon 10 times 
the size of that particle of light. The particle that we innovate multiplies and becomes a star. The star then multiplies and grows into a moon. The moon grows and multiplies and becomes a sun. And here we see that God is innovating for us through our innovation in invoking blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ. The question remains, how can we really innovate or originate blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ in a manner that's unprecedented? How can we do ibda in our salawat upon the Prophet? Some will say, well, that's a flat-out unwarranted religious innovation. It's a bid'ah. It's in fact a beautiful bid'ah, a beautiful innovation. Or in fact, it's an obligation. Why? Because God says, my servant continues to draw near unto me with supererogatory devotions until I love him. And if we innovate or originate salawat with respect to our hearing of the Prophet ﷺ, then that is an origination or a innovation. And we struggle to arrive at a state where we speak and hear and call out and send salawat or blessings upon the Prophet in a manner that is commensurate with our tongue and with our hearing and with our speech and with our calling out. In order for our hearing and our speech and our tongue to become purified and thereby become the hearing of the Prophet ﷺ, then our seeing becomes his seeing and we journey with and through this language. And we innovate in sending salawat upon the Prophet ﷺ. And this invocation of blessings brings joy to us. It brings joy to the Prophet ﷺ. And he thus sends blessings upon us. And we hear him through God's hearing. It is for this reason that God and his angels send blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ. And no one else. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Now the command comes. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O believers. O you who believe. Not O you Muslims or O you who have submitted. Not ya ayyuhal ladheena aslamu. But rather O you who believe in the unseen. Invoke blessings upon him and continue to innovate and originate in your blessings upon the Prophet. ﷺ. And who are these believers who send invocations of blessing upon the Prophet and who innovate and originate in their blessings upon him? ﷺ? It is those described. As having faith, which the Prophet says is a light that God casts into the heart of the believing servant. This light increases and decreases with righteous deeds. Yazidu wa yanqus bil amali salih, according to the hadith. That is to say, faith is not something that's expressed on the tongue. It's not a word or a letter. It's not read on a page by the eye. It's not a construct that is imagined or conceived of by the delimited intellect. Rather, faith is a light. And where is the locus of light, dear Lord? It's in the heart. The locus of faith is the heart. And this faith, is it delimited? Is it frozen without movement? Or does it have an expansion?
Does it occupy a narrow area? This faith increases Yazid, and it increases ad infinitum, without end. It increases to the point of being infinite, and it decreases to the point of becoming non-existent. How and why? Through righteous deeds, which means righteous deeds, al-amalu salih, cause faith to ascend or to descend, to increase or to decrease, to grow or to shrink. God says, وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ Righteous deeds bring it up or they elevate it. If your deeds are devoted to God, then they ascend. If they're not, they don't. And your faith is raised or ascends by virtue of righteous deeds that are performed through faith with a sincere intention. How then do you know that God has raised or elevated your hearing and your seeing or your speech? If your hearing becomes his hearing, your seeing becomes his seeing, your speech becomes his speech, at that point God raises the deeds that your limbs perform. And if he raises those deeds, he makes you forget them. Whatever is raised up to God is forgotten on earth. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ إِذَا نَسِيت And once you've forgotten your deeds, once you no longer ascribe them to yourself, then you begin to invoke your Lord truly. وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ Invoke your Lord once or after or if you forget. So you perform a righteous deed, then you forget it. What do you remember of it? You remember the invocation. You remember وَذْكُرْ and invoke. And you remain in constant invocation. And your deeds are continuously being raised. This is the connective link. This is the sila between your deeds and the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Ahmad in heaven. Muhammad on earth. Ahmad in the celestial sphere. He is with Ar-Rafiq al-A'la, the kind companion. And your deeds on earth are raised to God's kind companion in heaven. Your deeds are raised to Ar-Rafiq al-A'la. And who is with this kind companion, which is God? It's none other than Rasulullah alayhi salam. Now your innovation or origination, your unique connection in invoking blessings upon the Prophet ﷺ is your ascension. Through this connective link in the horizons, in the heavens, to the presence of the Chosen One ﷺ, in order to receive permission from Him and for Him to be pleased with you and for Him to please you through your request for permission and to respond to you and to respond to your invocation. And where does he, alayhi salatu salam, respond to your invocation of blessings upon him? When does he do so? He does so on Friday. He says, alayhi salatu salam, invoke blessings upon me on Friday because I return your salawat myself. I return your greetings myself. That is, you send invocations of blessings on him Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for six days. And they are brought together on Friday and he returns those greetings and blessings to you himself. In other words, God brings together the Prophet Sallallahu response to your salawat upon him, thereby giving your permission, giving you permission to enter upon your Lord Almighty. Now God's blessings upon you, if you are a believer, is without beginning and without end. 
in accordance with the faith that resides in your heart and in the measure of your own presence. His blessings and the blessings of His angels upon you are constant and continuous. The invocation of blessings upon you by the Prophet ﷺ takes place on Friday. Now these levels of ascension in blessings from and through God and these subtle graces are attained by seeing the beauty and the peace in the past and the present and the future that we spoke about in the Mudakara on Divine Love. When we invoke a blessing upon the Prophet ﷺ, we're not gifting him anything. We've never gifted him a salat. We consider this to be an obligation upon us because God created us to send salawat upon him. And if we don't, it's as if we have opposed our fitra, our innate human disposition, upon which God created us because God created man upon the fitra, the innate disposition of Islam, of sheer submission. This is, as per the hadith of Jabir, the first that God created was the light of your prophet. Islam is light. Prayer is light. Fasting is light. Fasting is a radiance. And radiance is light. A sadaqah or an act of charity is a burhan. It's a demonstrative proof. And demonstrative proof is light. Faith is nur, is light. And if all of these are light, and if the first thing that God created was the light of the Prophet, and the Prophet ﷺ is the one who brought submission, faith, and salat, Islam, Iman, and the salat, how could we not return to that primordial reality? This primordial reality, which is described by the Prophet himself when he says, I am the first and the last prophet. How could we not establish a connective link with him that is constant through God's marvelous innovation in his creation? He didn't create us in vain. He created us to establish a connective link with our Prophet ﷺ. And this is the Salat upon the Prophet ﷺ. As for the verbal articulation of an invocation of blessing upon the Prophet. The verbally articulated Salat, that's merely a first step that teaches us how to connect the Salat of our hearing with the hearing of the Prophet and the invocation of blessing of our seeing with the seeing of the Prophet and the Salat of our speech with the speech of the Prophet That is, this verbal Invocation of blessing is what teaches us his sunnah. When someone says, I want to learn the Prophet's behavioral example, his sunnah, tell them, Salli ala nabi, send invocations of blessings upon the Prophet. In other words, connect your soul to the Prophet and he will teach you his sunnah. And then you will, be a, you will become among those who say, My heart spoke to me about my Prophet. As for the one who has permission to enter upon the Divine Presence, they proclaim, Haddathani qalbi an rabbi. My heart spoke to me about my Lord. They are in the presence of of Al-Mustafa alayhi salatu salam and then the presence of my Lord. All of this is ibda, innovation in the realm of beauty. Even the aesthetics that you see around you are the first step toward arriving at these higher truths. And the beauty of your own intention determines its acceptance and connection with Allah azza wa jal. Your work, your deeds, your worship doesn't change. Your contributions to society don't change except that you beautify the intention behind your work 
and behind your deeds in order to work towards a constant and continuous connective link with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ahli Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ahli Sayyidina Muhammad kama barakta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ahli Sayyidina Ibrahim fil alameen innaka hamidun majid.